for the first time in 36 years, Canada is going to get a chance to win soccer's greatest award as the FIFA World Cup has finally returned. Yes, and this year's tournament is taking place in Qatar, which is exactly where we find TSN Sports Center host Lindsay Hamilton. She joins us live from Doha. Lindsay, it's so good to see you. So let's jump right in. Canada has not been at the World Cup since 1986. So what was it about this team that got them to uh, soccer's ultimate tournament? Well, you know, you could talk about their superstars, players like Alfonso Davies and Jonathan David. You could talk about their qualifying run. But I think when you ask the question, how did Canada get here, you really have to focus on the head coach. And that is a man named John Herdman. It's a name you're going to be hearing a lot over the next few weeks because he's truly a visionary. He is someone who had the idea to get Canada's men's team to the World Cup years ago, before it was even on people's radar. And he gets his players to buy into the system and believe. One of Canada's biggest superstars, Alfonso Davies, said he would run through a wall for this man. So he's got everyone to be a part of this brotherhood. And here we are, Canada's men's team making their first World Cup appearance in 36 years. And you know, the coach John Herdman has also said, this is tournament soccer. Anything can happen. So yes, it's a tough task ahead for Canada, but keep crossing your fingers. Yeah, it's it, anything can happen, but we've got some big, massive names uh, that are going to be appearing at the tournament. And some of them, some of the sport's greatest stars, players like hmm, Portugal's Cristiano Ronaldo, <laughs> I'm not biased, uh, Argentina's uh, Lionel Messi, they have never won a World Cup, either of them, even though they are massive stars on their respective teams. So let's talk about predictions. Like, what are people saying about who could finally whittle down to the finals? All right, well, Mel, I love they talk about Messi and Ronaldo because we know this could be the last time we see them at a World Cup, so that's even more reason to watch. It all begins November 20th. But yeah, you ask about predictions. Right now, Brazil, they are the favorites. And a fun fact for you ladies, I'm actually staying at the same hotel that the Brazil team is staying at. And I have to let you know that ever since they've arrived at the hotel, the security has increased tenfold. They built themselves a wall. We've changed gyms. I have not seen their biggest star, that being Neymar, in the elevator just yet. But if I do, you know I'll be on Instagram. So be checking throughout the tournament. I'll keep you all updated. But right now, Brazil are the tournament favorites. But you got other competition. Teams like Argentina, France, England. So you got a few days left. Make those brackets. A reminder once again, it all begins November 20th. And Mel, I know you're rooting for Ronaldo by the sounds of it. I am, I am. <laughs> okay, Lindsay, according to The Guardian, uh, Qatar had to build seven new stadiums, a new airport, roads, public transportation, um, hotels, and even built a new city to host the World Cup final. So, uh, you know, are they ready? Mm. Well, I've been here for nearly a week, and personally, I think they are ready. But, Cynthia, I'm glad you asked about the stadiums because the infrastructure of this tournament has been a large speaking point. We know that there is a dark cloud that hangs over this tournament, and that's because of issues surrounding migrant workers. We know that over 6,000 migrant workers have died. They think the number is likely far higher than that. And this is really a tournament that is a duality of emotions. On one hand, you have a celebratory nature as the best of the best in the world are competing on the biggest stage in soccer. Canada, again, making its first World Cup appearance on the men's side in 36 years. But simultaneously, you're dealing with human rights issues. You are dealing with LGBTQ plus issues. You're dealing with women's rights issues. So there is a duality of emotions with this tournament. A lot to think about. All right, so Lindsay, Canada will be going up against some heavyweights in the group stage like Belgium and Croatia. Now, I am optimistic about our team, but what are our chances? Hmm. Well, I love the optimism. That's a great starting point. But yes, Group F definitely has some heavy hitters in it. And kicking off the tournament with a team like Belgium, they are a second-ranked powerhouse nation, so it is no easy task. But I kind of like that Canada gets to start off with such a bang, right? They're diving into the deep end. They just finished up their last friendly against Japan earlier today. A 2-1 win, so that's a nice little confidence boost for Canada ahead of that opening match against Belgium. And then after that, November 27th, they've got Croatia. December 1st, they've got Morocco. And as I mentioned, the coach, John Herdman, says it is tournament football. Anything can happen. So Canada... Get ready. Be sure to watch that opening match November 23rd. This is a big deal.
Well, Lindsay, uh, how lucky are we to be able, with technology, to connect with you live in this way? Thank you so much for being able to chat with us today. Thanks for having me. It was great seeing you. And you can catch Qatar versus Ecuador in the World Cup's first official match. That is Sunday, November 20th on CTV and on TSN. Now, we are going to be getting pumped. We Ooh. have got, ladies, our official uh, Team Canada jerseys. All righties. I, I can cheer for more than one country at a time, right? I, I mean, that's yes, allowed. Can. Yeah, yes, I can. can. So, go Canada, go. Go, go Canada, Canada, go! Hey there. Wasn't that great? Do you know where you can find some equally good content? Our YouTube page. It's filled with discussions, debates, and some laughs. Head there now, like and subscribe.